Hey guys, uh, the next set that I'm going to cover is the 1923-24 uh, Biakin set. Now this is probably one of the best Cuban sets that exist that you can actually collect. Um, when we talked about the Cabanas and the 1910 Punch set, those were exceedingly difficult, right? Like you'll remember that when we um, went through some of the, the number of graded specimens, the 1910 punch has like 70 total out of all the cards. And uh, with the Biakins, you can actually find these cards. They are printed, they're photographs, and they're printed on, on a really nice paper. Um, there was no album for these to be pasted into, so at least one that we've seen. So all of them have, they don't have glue on the back or any of these issues that are so common to see with, um, with Cuban and actually Latin American cards in general. Uh, the Biakins, why, why are the Biakins so great? Well, number one, the, they're photographic, love that. Number two, they include the 1923-24 Santa Clara team, which many people compare to the, uh, the Yankees teams, 1928 Yankees, those types of teams, one of the best teams ever. Uh, the photography used is unique, so you don't see uh, these same images being used on other cards. Um, I'm going to be putting putting uh, posts of these cards as we talk uh, up on the screen, so hopefully you'll be able to appreciate those as well. And then you can also see uh, in my SGC registry some of the um, some all of the scans. So. The, the there are great things. There, there's the the Santa Clara team. There's the Habana team, Almendares team, and Mario Now team. And uh, in total, it's, the set is 60 cards. And there's a number of people that are pretty close or have completed uh, the full set. The most valuable cards, of course, are the uh, Hall of Famers, which are right here: um, Oscar Charleston, Pop Lloyd, Andy Cooper. Jose Mendez and Cristobal Torriente are the highlights of, of those. And um, these cards, again, I'll put them on the screen here, are, are amazing. What you'll notice about these cards is that they, you can have a higher grade card, um, a higher graded card versus a lower graded card, but you may actually find yourself preferring the lower graded card in much the way the old judges, you know, the photographic quality, the clarity, it's its very much the same um, with the Beacons. Oscar Charleston, I think, needs no introduction. He's uh, a number, what, number four in Bill James's all-time um, uh, player list. That card routinely in mid-grade position, uh, you know, they don't trade very frequently, but a couple of the sales that I saw were like 22, 28 grand. So that's the biggest card, followed closely by the Pop Lloyd, which also uh, typically trades. I know, you know, normal mid-grade um, examples trade right around the 20K mark. Uh, lower grade ones go for lower. You can get lucky in an auction, but uh, pay careful attention to photo quality. Um, even a, a hole-punched one or a wormhole one, those will still bring, you know, close to, to 10 grand. So um, those, that's Pop, Pop Lloyd. And then the other Hall of Famers, Mendez, Torriente, um, Cooper tend to be lower, right? Let's say a nicely graded example would probably be right, right around 10 to 12K. Um, lower examples would be, uh, would be less. Um, but that's not the only exciting thing. The five Negro League Hall of Famers are in the set, amazing the photographic stuff. There's also a ton of amazing other players. Um, they are, you know, you, you've got uh, Nip Winters. It's his only card, great Negro League uh, star. You have Dobie Moore. You have Oliver Marcel that you know was in the Courier poll if you're a Negro League historian as the best third baseman ahead of Dandridge and these other guys. So you know you have an amazing uh, you know checklist of these these very important Negro League stars: Frank Duncan, um, Clint Thomas, uh, Dobie Moore. I said so. Alejandro Ohms. I mean these are these are really really the best players on the short list to be considered who played in the teens, 20s, and 30s if they ever wanted to add more Negro Leaguers to uh, to the, um, the Baseball Hall of Fame. So these cards are 
you know, so, some of my absolute favorites, um, certainly my favorites from the 1920s. The other, another important thing to talk is the backs. You know, they're called the Beacons or Billikins. A lot of people will say, I just do the, the, the Spanish translation here. And, um, and it's very typical, I'll also put this on the screen here, uh, almost all of them have a, a Beacon back. So on the back of the card, it actually says uh, um, uh, Beacon. And then there are very few that say La Moda. So these are like very, very rare um, back examples. There's only a few, and most of those actually have been trimmed for whatever reason. They're very tight, all the corners are trimmed. Not sure what the use was. Um, another interesting thing about this set is there, there, we have seen photographs that include exactly the pictures that are on uh, on the cards. That's not unlike any other set. The interesting thing is, it looks like the photographer took three sets, uh, took a, a picture of three players at once, and then cut them about you know mid body length, and that's what was used for the cards. Um, another important oddity of this set is. Even though the set is 15 players for each of the four Cuban teams, some other cards have shown up um, that are related. They look eerily similar. And, and those are known as the Matanzas uh, Biakins. And the Matanzas Biakins are a... We're not sure if, if it was just another promotion run because Matanzas is another semi-professional team not in the main uh, Cuban league. And so some of those cards have, have come up. Most of them, there are a few Negro leaguers, but most of them are, are local amateur players. One that could potentially be in that set, which has never been seen, is the possibility of a Martin De Higo card. And he is, uh, he was very, very young at that point, And he, um, you know, played on that team. And there is a photograph that um, one of the original photographs that actually shows that. So pretty amazing um, piece of information and, and something that is really, really uh, important to the history of baseball and, and Negro League collecting. Some other, you know, um, important, you know, things. I get a lot of questions. Hey, how much are these cards worth? There's not a lot of information on vintage, you know, card prices. Well, when... Hakes sold some of these a couple years ago. I think they actually went for pretty reasonable prices. So, you know, I'd say for these mid-level stars, you know, I think probably two, three, four thousand dollars would be a, a natural price point in um in in those second tier stars, mid-grade, okay image. As you get as the image quality goes up and as um and as the quality of the card goes up, of course you're gonna pay higher premiums. And um, and on the lower end, you get the faded cards, and you get um, you get some of some of the other um, uh, you know just deficiencies in, in in cards that will drive the the price down. Now, a couple other things besides the Matanzas Biakins, there are a couple other add-on cards um, that have been found, um, and and they're specifically. Dave Brown, you know, is, is one of these, and I'll, and I'll put the post up here. Um, this is the only graded copy I know of two total. Um, the, the, we don't really include these as part of the set, but they they feel like they could have been part of the set or were issued as like a traded section. We really don't know a lot why um, these cards are so rare and weren't, weren't issued like the rest of the set in the round numbers that we see. So it's not really included as, as part of the set, and there's also like a Bill Holland and a couple other cards that we kind of include as not really part of the set, just like we keep the Matanzas out. So when you go, when you see these in your hand, you I, I, I guarantee you, if you're a baseball card collector, you will just say, wow, these are amazing. They have the photography, the, the era of this, the fact that it includes some of the most amazing Negro League players of all times. Are, are really some of the exciting um, highlights of this of this set. And, you know, you can pick up some of these examples at, at reasonable prices given the, the, important, the important relic. So again, 500 and so uh, cards uh, that have been graded. PSA has a, has a handful. There's probably, you know, 
equal number of those that haven't been graded or you know, somewhere around there. So you can find these cards, look out for the big auction houses. Some of them promote them better than others. So you may be able to pick up one of these superstars at reasonable prices. A lot of great speculative bets. If you think they're going to um, have Negro League, more Negro League players get in between the Holmeses, the Marcells, you know, the Clint Thomases. These are great players that have a legit chance to get in and they have these cards. Um, single photography, not used elsewhere. You know, Nip Winters, Doby Moore, some amazing players. Um, and, and this is without a doubt my favorite card set from the 1920s of, uh, of, of Cuban cards. And it includes the famed, my favorite probably Negro League card in terms of looks and importance, the famed Oscar Charleston card. So please let, let me know uh, if you like this, if you think we need to talk more about any specific part of the Beacon set, but I certainly appreciate you taking the time to learn and hope you enjoy this.